Hello out there everybody. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, today we're doing another video on high conflict divorce, high conflict custody, divorce court, family court, uh, high conflict individuals. Uh, when I say high conflict individuals, most of the time I mean someone who has a personality disorder, most commonly uh, borderline or narcissistic personality disorder. And uh, quite honestly, people with those uh, personality disorders, they, they do, they need help. They're mentally ill, they really are. Um, however, I take huge issue with some of the things that they do when it comes to kids and families and things like that. And so I have very low tolerance for that type of stuff. If you're new here, my name's Scott Carter and uh, I'm a licensed therapist and uh, I, I really feel like I, I bring a different type of angle or a different type of perspective when it comes to family court, divorce, uh, custody issues, and things like that. I do a lot of work with kids. I do a lot of work with families, and I see how these issues affect kids directly. I talk to these kids. They sit in my office. They sit on my couch. Sometimes I deal with both parents. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm just working with one parent. And... Quite frankly, I do not believe that our system is set up enough to protect kids. I don't believe that adults in general and uh, people in general do enough to protect kids. I see a lot of, of activism these days and I see very little in terms of doing more to protect kids from sexual violence, child abuse, neglect, um, parental alienation, those types of things. Uh, and, and as a side note, in my world, when I see adults that talk, that treat children like they're adults, to me that says a lot about that particular adult or, or group of adults. And I feel like I see that a lot, where people, people want to treat kids like adults. But I digress. It's sort of a whole other topic, I, I think. And so the, the topic for this video is five things, five-ish things, that I feel like uh, are huge problems in the, the family court situation. Okay, again, I bring a, I bring the perspective from someone who, frankly, is on the cleanup end of a lot of kids and families who are really struggling. So let's get to it. Number one, there's low accountability for parents, and what I mean by this is the court will sometimes tell, for example, I've seen this. A judge from the from the um, bench says, uh, "Be more civil. I'm ordering you to be more civil." <sighs> but there's no accountability. There's no follow-up, and there's there's the judge will often put these types of things in place, but there's no consequence for for breaking that. And I kind of agree with this order a little bit to be like, clean it up, be civil, do what you have to do, suck it up, and if you don't. I'm going to find you in contempt, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a fine, I might even put you in jail for a couple of days, whatever, right? They can do that, they can do those things, I've seen it, it's rare, it's very rare. It's low accountability for the parents, okay? Uh, speaking of accountability, it takes us to number two. Uh, the next problem with family court is that there's low accountability for judges, lawyers, and commissioners, okay? And, you know, judges and commissioners, these guys are, are attorneys, former attorneys, um, they probably still hold their standing with, with the State Bar Association as, as a licensed attorney. And there's virtually no accountability for these guys. Lawyers do horrible things. They drag kids through the mud. They weaponize kids. They, they use kids as leverage. They do all kinds of horribly unethical things. And there's virtually no accountability. Uh, quite honestly, there seems to be a little bit of a good old boys club going on in the attorney world. And I see this, I've seen this with doctors, actually. I've worked in hospitals. Doctors will look out for other doctors, even if they hate that doctor. So one doctor could be nearly killing the patients, and other doctors are keeping their mouth shut because they look, they look out for each other. That's part of hospital culture. If you ask me, people to put too much, uh, uh, too much faith and confidence in doctors, and I feel the same way about judges, frankly. Um, judges undoubtedly see lawyers do unethical things left and right and they say nothing and who holds the lawyers or who holds the judges accountable nobody I was even involved in a case where a judge made um, a court order 
that really was illegal. Well, he was not legally able to make this order, and that was he ordered one of the parents, wrote, a, wrote an order that one of the parents could not call Child Protective Services. That'd be like writing an order, court order, uh, that someone could not call 911 if their house was on fire, go to the hospital. You can't do that. But this is this is just a reflection of what these guys are like. Um, they can't do that. There's and there's virtually no oversight for things like that. Okay, so accountability for both parents and lawyer uh, and ju judges and lawyers are uh, some of my issues. Okay, um, number three. Looking at my notes, my number three thing is uh, the courts don't involve enough mental health professionals and. This is where the ethics get trampled on. I've seen lawyers that make mental health diagnoses. They're not allowed to do that, by the way. If you're involved in a custody case where your uh, opposing lawyer is attempting to make a clinical mental health diagnosis on the children, you can go to the state bar, report them. Um, don't hesitate to do so, okay? Um, keep, keep them honest. They, someone has to keep these guys honest, okay? Uh, but I feel like the court needs mental health professionals to actually straighten attorneys out when they're making these outrageous and ridiculous claims about mental health when it comes to children and what's happening with the children. Lawyers are biased. They're, they will paint a narrative, whatever they think will help them win in court. A winning lawyer is a rich lawyer. And they will do whatever they have to do to win. And so... You know, a lawyer could stand up and say, you know, I actually had this situation. A lawyer said that kids had PTSD, and I was a little bit inexperienced at the time. If that happened now, I'd be reporting him to the bar because he made the diagnosis, okay? Um, and courts just need to use mental health professionals for this type of stuff more often. Um, they need to... Uh, uh, in, Hire and incorporate mental health professionals to look out for the, the well-being of the children, stuff like that, okay? Number four, <laughs> family court drags kids through the mud, okay? If you're going to court and you have kids and you're doing custody stuff, your kids are going to get dragged through the mud. And don't expect your attorney and your ex's attorney to look out for your kids and protect them through the process. They won't do it. Again, this is why I think we need mental health professionals to, to put to put things like that in check. Look out for the kids when nobody else seems to be. Um, but family court makes absolutely no stipulations about uh, leaving the kids out of it. I guess that's not entirely true. Maybe I don't bring kids to the court hearings, which I'm glad. However, it wouldn't shock me or surprise me if, if at some point that sort of got overturned. But make no mistake, the court does not care. The attorneys, the judge, they do not care if your kids get drugged through the mud through, through the whole process. They're going to end up in the middle and, and receive some of the crossfire. Um, and number five. What did I write down? Let me look at my notes. My number five concern is that the courts make no recognition for parental alienation. Uh, to me, parental alienation is a big deal. I did a video on this, so make sure you go check it out. Uh, to me, parental alienation is a problem. There are ways to deal with it. Uh, I believe, as do other professionals that I've worked with that deal with the court, and they do custody evaluations and the like, agree that the court should recognize parental alienation. But of course they don't. Um, why? Again because family court is ran by lawyers and they don't care. They don't care if kids are harmed. I'm sure some of them do. I do have a friend that is a family attorney and one of the reasons why I consider him a friend is because he hates family attorneys. <laughs> like, we might get along. <laughs> um, uh, anyways, so family court, it's, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. It does, in my opinion, a lot more harm than good. And it needs reform badly. So, anyways, <laughs> that's sort of going to end end it right there. Because, I mean, trying to reform family court, man, good luck with that. That's a big, that's a big issue. But in the long run, what you can do is, is follow some rules and some guidelines 
set some boundaries uh, to help ensure that those things don't happen to your kids if, if that's something that you're concerned about. I teach my clients uh, five rules for high conflict divorce and custody, six rules for high conflict co-parenting. I also teach uh, Socratic questioning method for dealing with high conflict individuals. Um, it's a much more effective way to uh, deal with people who have personality disorders, really lowers the conflict. Um, I've taught it to a lot of people and almost all of them tell me that it's just so much more effective for them. Uh, another, some, I offer a lot of these consultation type things for family court. I really want these situations to be lower conflict, uh, have swift and speedy ends. Um, so again, your attorney is not going to teach you any rules on, is not going to be able to teach you how to deal with someone who has a personality disorder. They might say that they do, they, they don't, they have no idea. If they say they know how to deal with someone who's borderline or narcissistic, then they're probably narcissistic. They, they have no idea. Um, if a lawyer tells you that they know how to deal with a personality disorder, they're lying. Uh, 99 times out of 100, they're lying. So if you need some help dealing with uh, a lot of this stuff so that we can try to bring these to a swift and speedy, uh, less chaotic end, I offer a lot of consultation type services. So go check out my website, saltcitycounseling.com. It's not Salt Lake City counseling, it's Salt City. Some people had someone make that mistake just today. <clears throat> and um, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. See you next time.